Hello everybody, Infernape Shinjo here. So, pseudo legendaries, they're in every single Pokemon game. And to a lot of people, they can be considered a little broken. Not as broken as legendaries, but kind of in the middle. Hence the term pseudo legendaries. To my knowledge, pseudo legendary is actually a fan made term, which I think Pokemon eventually adopted into their dictionary of Pokemon terms. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think pseudo legendary was a fan created term. But a pseudo legendary is, by definition, a Pokemon with a three stage evolutionary line and a base stat of exactly 600 before Mega Evolving. So there are some mons that could be regarded as pseudo legendary but aren't for one reason or another. Like for example, there are some people that might think Volcarona is a pseudo legendary, but it isn't because it's not part of a three stage line. And Slacking, even though it's pretty busted, it isn't a pseudo legendary because its base stats are higher than 600. And I could go through Pokemon that people think are pseudo legendaries but actually aren't, but that's not what I'm here to do today. Today, I am here to count down my top 9 pseudo legendaries. I've gone through listing off my top 10 favorites from each generation. I've gone through my top 10 starters. I've even done champions. But I've never done pseudo legendaries. Although at the same time it does kind of irk me that I can't do a top 10 because at the moment there are only 9 pseudo legendaries. But I didn't want to wait for the next gen to come out to release another pseudo legendary to do this list. Now I'm not going to say exactly what pseudo legendaries are on the table. So if you're still not entirely clear on what a pseudo legendary is. You'll figure out, but I'm not going to spoil any of them here because you're going to see them in the list anyway. I didn't write any notes out for any of this, so hopefully this doesn't turn into a ramble fest for me. So unfortunately, my least favorite pseudo is como -O. Now, that's not to say that como -O doesn't look sick. I mean... He's the first dragon fighting type, so that counts for something. But, I don't know, at the same time, I never really felt compelled to use como -O. It just looks a little bit over-designed in my opinion, and the fact that you can't really get him that accessible in the game. Now granted, most pseudos are like that, but to an extent, you could get the pseudos at a reasonably placed level. But... I'm pretty sure you can't get Jangmo-O until essentially the end of the game. But I don't know, it just never really appealed to me design-wise. I'm sure all the extra bells and whistles that are on him are part of the tradition and part of the background of why he looks like this. But for being the first dragon fighting type, it just never appealed to me personally. <laughs> Now don't let the fact that Gudra is an 8th mean that it isn't good. Because Gudra is probably one of the cutest pseudo legendaries. Which is certainly unique because most pseudo legendaries just look vicious or just awesome. Not to say that Gudra doesn't look like those things but just when he starts off as a Gumi it just looks freaking adorable. And the fact that Gudra essentially looked like Gumi go grown up. But just like como -O, I never felt compelled to use him. Because, what is it, I think Gumi has a very small chance of being found in X and Y. And even so, to evolve him to its full stage, it has to be raining. And it's not like you can just set up rain and have it evolve that way, because you have to find a place that is already raining. Now Ash's Gudra does kind of save it for me a little bit because Gudra's battles in the X and Y anime were cool. But unfortunately at the end of the day, I just never felt compelled to use a Gudra. And the other seven pseudos that are further down the list, I just like more than Gudra personally. Now Salamence was certainly a surprise. Obviously... 
Salamence is one of two Gen 3 pseudo legendaries. And personally, I just don't like it as much. Now, I mean, I do like his base design. I like the idea of Bagon wanting to learn how to fly so badly that he literally grows wings. But at the same time, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what Salamence is based off of. Maybe just a regular lizard. But I would say if I was just rating his base form, then he might even be top 5. But the fact that his Mega Evolution just looks so stupid, honestly. It's been like, what, 5, 6, maybe even 7 years since Oros came out and revealed Mega Salamence? I just... I don't know what they were thinking when they thought of Mega Salamence. I know that some Megas are supposed to look stupid and comical like Slowbro, but they could have done something much better with Salamence. It just looks kind of goofy in his mega form. Like I said, if I was just rating Salamence on its own, it would probably be easy top 5. But I have to incorporate the Mega in there as well, and unfortunately that pushes it back a little bit for me. Dragapult lands himself pretty nicely in 6th place. And the main reason that Dragapult isn't higher or lower is, first of all, it's the newest one. It's got some pretty big shoes to fill. And second, I've never actually used one. I didn't even use it on my team in Sword and Shield. So I'm kind of torn on that aspect. On the one hand, it's got a pretty cool design. It's got a ghost dragon typing, which is very cool, only unique to Garatina. But on the other hand, I've never actually used him before. So it's kind of a tough thing. I can't really rate Dragapult since it's so new as well. But I wanted to at least give Dragapult the respect it deserves. Number five is Hydreigon. And this one... I think it's the first Dark Dragon line, correct me if I'm wrong, up to Unova. I'm pretty sure it was the first Dark Dragon. Being the first Dark Dragon, I feel like it went off pretty well, all things considered. Even in Pokédex entries, it's something like the Zwilus heads fight amongst each other and whoever wins becomes the dominant Hydreigon head or something like that. But Hydreigon itself just looks like a monster. It has a pretty good special stat. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's almost top tier. And speed, pretty good as well. Not to even mention the shiny form. I haven't really mentioned the shiny form in others, but its shiny form doesn't look bad. I know a lot of people don't like green shinies, but I feel like the dark green works for Hydreigon. But like the other ones, I've never felt compelled to use a Hydreigon, mainly because it evolves so late. If they would have it evolve at 55, for example, maybe, then I might want to use it. But it evolves way past the main story in black and white. Actually, I'm pretty sure it evolves way past the main plot in every single game. And honestly, that's the one flaw I can find with Hydreigon, that it evolves so late. Fourth is Tyranitar. And... Being a Pokemon, essentially Godzilla, I did actually think about using him a couple of times. But, just like a lot of Pokemon games, I never really get around to competitive battling. But, throwing the competitive battling aside for a minute, Tyranitar's design just looks cool. It starts off as an adorable Larvitar. Pupitar, not so sure about. Pupitar honestly looks kind of awkward when compared to Larvitar and Tyranitar. Because it doesn't look like it belongs. But Tyranitar is just awesome. The ability to set up a sandstorm whenever he enters a battle. And his Mega where it's kind of over designed in my opinion. It still looks pretty cool. And even the plot in the anime with the Tyranitar and the Larvitar egg back in Johto. So I will give Tyranitar his respects for all that. But I feel like from the three pseudos remaining. I just prefer those three. And the three pseudos that are left, I've actually considered using in a competitive sense one time or another. In 
know he had to be here. Number three, Dragonite. I have to give the OG boy some respect. People are always bashing on Dragonite because he's a dragon, Charizard's not a dragon, they're both orangish, and just all those early memes of Charizard and Dragonite, if you know them, you know them. But Dragonite honestly doesn't get enough respect. I liked his role in the first movie, even though he didn't really do much. I like Drake's Dragonite. Iris' Dragonite is a cool development thing. And even now, Ash's Dragonite. Her Dragonite looks a little derpy, but I just like him. He's cool. He's got multi-scale so he can live any hit from full. And he can just set up dragon dances in front of your face and hit you with outrage or wing attack maybe. Actually, Aerial Ace will probably be a better flying stab. You, you get the point. He can set up in front of your face with Dragon Dance. Now sure, a lot of other pseudos and other mons get D-Dance, but Dragonite essentially gets a free heal. Anytime he's a full, he just doesn't take as much damage from a super effective move. So, that ice move you were going to use on him? No, no, no. Not taking anything from me. And getting his speed up enough, he can just roost off all those damage points. Essentially what I'm trying to get at is people don't give Dragonite enough credit. Now sure, his shiny doesn't look the same as Dragonair and Dratini, which I honestly feel they probably should have kept it like that. It does make Dragonite pink. It might look a little bit weird, but I'm down for it. As much as I would love to put Garchomp at number one, it has to go in number two. Although to be fair, Garchomp and Dragonite could potentially switch spaces because I like them so much that it's honestly a very close race for me. I just decided to put Garchomp further because I love Sinnoh and Cynthia's Garchomp is an absolute monster. Honestly, makes you want to get the Gibble from early on in the game and have a Garchomp showdown in the league. Now sure, there are probably some people that would say, I was able to defeat Cynthia's Garchomp easier. And yeah, that's probably true. But Garchomp just remains as a dominant force, mainly because of Cynthia. Honestly, if Cynthia wouldn't have had a Garchomp as her ace, Garchomp probably wouldn't even be this high up. Because, let's be real, it's mega, kind of strange. I do like the little scythe hands that he gets, but why does he get slower? Can somebody explain that to me? But because of Champion Cynthia, Garchomp will forever remain in infamy. So by process of elimination, number one is Metagross. I don't think I could have made this without giving Metagross his respects. Because... Out of all of the other pseudo-legendaries, most of them are dragon types. Actually, I'm pretty sure at least half of them are dragons. Let me see very quickly. Como, Ogudra, Salamence, Dragapult, Hydreigon, Dragonite, Garchomp. Okay, yeah. Seven out of the nine pseudo-legendaries are dragon types. And Tyranitar essentially could be a dragon if they really wanted to make him a dragon instead. Essentially what I'm trying to get at is Metagross is the one pseudo that doesn't look like a giant monster. I mean he does, but when you compare him to mons like Garchomp, como -O, they're just all menacing and Metagross is here just kind of feeling like the odd one out because he's a steel and psychic type, which being one gen after the steel type was introduced, they had to make a heavy hitter for the steel type to make it a threat. Because in Gen 2, what steel types did we get? Skarmory. Don't really think he has much big power behind him. Steelix. Okay. Don't think he has enough power to actually support his big giant design. Magneton. Okay, Magneton is just kind of pushing it. There were no big steel type hits until Generation 3. You got mons like Agron, which... Another example of a mon that probably should be a pseudo but isn't. But then you have Metagross. A mon that just looks freaking awesome. I had a figure of Metagross back when I was growing up. 
And just like in the anime and the stuff like that, his arms can float up and he just floats. He just looks, he just looks cool. He's essentially the best part about the other mod that I mentioned on this list. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, he's probably the only one that I would say has an improved design upon his Mega. Because I've already ragged on Salamence, Tyranitars, and Garchomp's look kinda dumb. But Metagross's amps it up. Metagross just looks cool. And the fact that he has a brain that's as big as a supercomputer or something. Essentially, he knows that you're going to fall to him. He's just that smart. And not to even mention his shiny form. Both his regular and his mega shiny form are so cool. They are so amazing. And Game Freak knew that because they gave you a shiny Beldum at the start of Oras. Even Metagross himself, you could run him as a regular Metagross, or you could run him as a Mega. I think that most people run him as a Mega if given the opportunity, although obviously in Sword and Shield you can't. But, base Metagross, good on its own. I'm pretty sure his attack and special attack are somewhat close, so you could run a mixed set, you could run a physical set with Meteor Mash to boost your attack. Or you could just go all out with the Mega Form, which gets Tough Claws. You know what else gets Tough Claws? Mega Charizard X. So, Metagross is on the same level as Mega Charizard X. Although it's probably a little bit further down because Charizard has fire moves, but... You know what I'm saying. Only good Mons get Tough Claws. And Metagross is clearly a good Mon. Honestly, making this list makes me kind of want to get a Metagross in Sword and Shield. But those are my top 9 pseudo-legendaries. Let me know what you think. If your list is any different from mine, you can leave it down in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this top 10, I had a couple of other ideas that I was jungling around in my head. I'm not sure if you'd be down to actually watch them. I was thinking about a top 10 legendaries or a top 10 Mega Evolutions, because I've already mentioned Mega Evolutions in this video. So if those would be videos you'd be down to see, let me know. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next episode. Momentai.